Rob, the Lakers. I'm and we're bringing in Rob G to kind of late set the table, Rob, for this next discussion with what's going on in the Lakers. Of course, the trade deadline's tomorrow. I don't see anything happening. Not, certainly nothing big with the Lakers, but kind of set the table, Rob. G. Well, quickly, Chris, in that line of thinking, Dejounte Murray for whatever reason, has been ruled out to tonight's game for the Hawks. No, that means he's oh. been traded. Very questionable. Now, no, that normally. Now, why would he get ruled out? No, you don't want the guy to get hurt. Yesterday. Right. You don't want the guy to get Absolutely. hurt. You know what I mean? So Before we'll you make the trade. Definitely so. something to monitor. But okay. as you said, Chris, earlier on Wednesday, Bill Ryder, CBS Sports, reported that one reason why the Los Angeles Lakers may not push their chips into the table and make a big move here at this upcoming trade deadline is because they believe that if and when Donovan Mitchell requests his trade out of Cleveland, which has been well reported for about a year now, that he has no indication, no intention whatsoever of re-signing in Cleveland after his deal is up after next season. Yep. The Lakers believe that they can trade as many as three first-round picks, as many as three pick swaps, and salary filler to get Donovan Mitchell this offseason. So rather than make a trade now, a big trade for maybe a DeJounte Murray, they'd rather hold on to those assets and use them for Donovan Mitchell this summer. That's interesting. That's interesting. Um, look, like I said, I don't think they're going to be able to make a move of any real consequence, Rob, before the deadline. So, of course, if you can't do that, then you go for it this year. And if you can't, you know, get as far as you'd like, which obviously would be a championship, then if you could get a Donovan Mitchell. Now, the Knicks will be another team interested in him, Rob. And the Knicks obviously have things going well with them. Donovan is from New York, right? His dad worked with the Mets. The dad worked uh, for the Mets. He wanted to play for the Knicks and right. just couldn't get there. So I, they, they might have the upper hand. Uh, over the Lakers, but if I'm Donovan Mitchell, sure, I'd love the chance to play with Anthony Davis and obviously LeBron. Now, I would say this, if that were to happen and LeBron's 40 years old or, you know, about to turn 40 when the season starts, LeBron should be the third option on that team. Like, it, it should be Donovan Mitchell, Anthony Davis, and then LeBron. And obviously that's never been the case for, for LeBron, and rightly so. But for that to work together, I, I think LeBron would be a better third scorer than Donovan Mitchell. I think Donovan Mitchell, he's always been the number one scorer, and I think he'd need to stay that way to get the most out of him. And then AD's the two, and then LeBron at 40, you know, is the third scorer. And if that were the case, that could work. But again, we're, we're getting way ahead of ourselves, Rob. Because uh, Mitchell, first of all, we'll see if he even leaves Cleveland. Secondly, does he pick the Lakers or try to dictate himself to the Lakers rather than going to the Knicks? And fourth, Rob, other teams or third, other teams will be able to make some nice offers too, including the Knicks. So it's a long, we're a long ways away from Donovan Mitchell joining the Lakers. But those would be my thoughts on that scenario. Here's my issue with the Lakers. Uh, we'll wait and see what uh, shakes out. You can't wait. LeBron James is 40 years old or close to it. How old is he, 39? Going to be 40? Yeah, but do you do you think there's a move out there? Well, but, but I'm saying you got to do whatever you can. You can't let seasons go by thinking he's going to continue to be the, the player that he is. He already, Chris, is putting up numbers with no impact. So you're talking about another year going by and you're thinking he's going to get better or is it going to get worse as you go on with LeBron? That's what I'm saying. Like, if you're going to keep a LeBron James on your team and you're going to try to win with this guy, it's got to be today, not tomorrow. Tomorrow's too late. Chris, also injuries. He's got a nice stretch here where he hasn't been injured, but this guy has been injured often the last few years. Right. So, so you're waiting till next year. You wait till the end of the year for him to pull something or rip something or and like like you 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 have to if you're in on LeBron, it's got to be today. Everything's got to be immediate. It's got to be now. Next year, the year after, and you can't bank on that. 
You can't bank on LeBron continuing to put up numbers and doing what he's doing, staying healthy. You got him now. Make a push. Anthony Davis, he's been as healthy as he's been in a while, right, playing games this year. If you're going to do something, do something wild. Give up some picks. Do whatever you got to do, Chris, to make something happen and give yourself a shot. Here's the other thing. Denver's not going nowhere. The Clippers aren't going. I'm just saying, like, going forward. The T-Wolves are better. Who else we talked about? Um, Oklahoma City's going Oklahoma be City is a good team. Uh, Sacramento's in the mix. All right, the Warriors are going the other way, Chris. Uh, but but the other teams around well, the, you yeah, are. Yeah, the West is full of teams. Am I right? Yeah, good teams. Either good yep. teams or teams that are on the upswing. So yep. you can't wait. Yeah, I hear you, and I agree with that, but I, I just don't see the moves that are there to be made. No, I, I, if there's no move, I, but I'm saying the attitude should not be about waiting. It should be about no, that's forcing fair. the issue that's to fair. make something happen. Right, and that's fair. And I look, I, I don't, I'm not one of those that believes LeBron is going to leave the Lakers this summer, but I guess it's a possibility. So like well, you what said, if the Lakers say that they don't want Bronny? Like, like if LeBron, if Bronny comes out and the Lakers are like, that's not the business we're in. That's what they do in Charlotte. We don't do that in L.A. Like, seriously. LeBron, we love you, but we're not drafting a kid who's averaging five points in college, Chris, who, who's, you know what I mean, who's had a health scare and all the other issues that are going in. I mean, is that the Lakers? Nah, it's going to be interesting. I mean, that's a whole nother topic that, is. that, that we actually could get into because there's been some, some noise around that, um, you know, with Austin Rivers saying, that, you know, he played obviously for his dad. And he said he would, he, from his experience of playing for his dad, he would not like Bronny to play with LeBron because he said no. everything gets, you get discredited for everything you did. Like people say, oh, you're only in the league because of your dad. You're only... And people you didn't know say how that is, about Chris. Austin. No, ab- absolutely. It's hard That's to an shake that. Discussion. It's hard yeah. to shake that. We'll do that after football. We, sh- we we'll should get do. Into that. We could do it. Th- yeah, we'll, we'll, no, we'll after see. Football. But that's a good topic. It's hot right now. And Steven Jackson shot shot back at Austin, and you know didn't like what he said, and so it's an interesting discussion. But yeah, we may or may not get into that. Um, but. Yeah, it's going to be interesting, Rob, uh, what the Lakers do. Like I said, I, I don't foresee anything. And and DeJounte, look, DeJounte gives them the length and athleticism and potential defense that they need. He hasn't been quite the defender he used to be while he's in Atlanta, but I think a lot of that is because he's in Atlanta and they're not playing for anything and the culture is not great there. But um, what he isn't is a great shooter, and they do need some three-point shooting. I know he's improved. From three, he's been better this year than ever, but he's still, I, you know, not necessarily a knockdown shooter. Um, so I, I'll be surprised if they make a move, and I'll be shocked if they make a major move that shifts the landscape of things. I think they just got to be like, this is what we have. Let's go to battle with what we have, and if we do the right things, we can maybe make a little noise. Rob, I would say this. Right now, the only two teams I would – now, look, I'm not saying I would pick the Lakers to be OKC or Phoenix necessarily or Minnesota in a playoff series. And I could throw in Dallas and Sacramento and some other teams. What I will say, Rob, is that right now, the only teams that I would definitively say the Lakers would not beat in a series is Denver and, if healthy, the Clippers. Now, I'm, again, I'm not saying I'd even pick them over some of these other teams, but OKC is young. Minnesota is young. No, I get that. Uh, you know what I mean? Sacramento is young. Dallas and, and Phoenix are, you know, they're, they're good, but they're not, like, scaring you. You know what I mean? So I'm just saying if you have LeBron and AD and a good cast of role players, you take your chances. You know, I mean, like you, Rob, we talked about it. Why send out two or three role players tomorrow to bring back to bring back two or two three, or three role right. players? No, I agree with that. That's just window dressing. You know what right. I mean? You're not right. solving a problem. Right. So, so if you're telling me that's the trade they have, then I'm not making that trade. But if you're just saying, well, let's just wait till next year, that's what I'm against, Chris. Like, no, the, I feel let's you. wait till next you. year. 
Right, because you know the, you need to win now for, with LeBron. 